Hi, I'm Brandon Grizzly. I'm a high school math teacher. Today we're going to look at how to solve simple trigonometric equations, and by that I mean ones where you basically just have the trig stuff to do and not a lot of other manipulation of the equation. We're going to use the cast rule, so you have to already know about that in order to be able to use these new skills. So if you don't already know, back up and look at the cast rule video so that you can be uh, prepared for this one. So I'm going to write down an example of a question, and then I'm going to give you the strategy that we'll follow, and then we'll go ahead and do that. So here is our example. Find all angles. And I'm just going to give them a name. Find all angles, theta, between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, for which this is true. Sine of that angle, sine of theta, equals 0 0.2500. Now another way that this could be worded is solve this equation for theta between 0 and 360. There is a more complicated question where we don't put the 0 to 360 part, and you would have to have a more complete description of that. There are infinitely many angles like that. We're not going to do that here though, so don't worry for today. So here is our strategy. First of all, we start by using, so I'll just say use an inverse relation to find a possible solution. And I'm saying possible because we may have to modify what we get from our calculator when we use that inverse relation function. That would be like sine inverse, cos inverse, etc. And then from there, we use the cast rule to find related angles, that would be one or two, related angles with the same sign, S-I-G-N, for that function. So that's our strategy. We're going to do that right now with this specific example, and then and I'll refer to our strategy as we go along here. So let's start writing our solution. So step one, let's use an inverse relation to find a possible solution. So here's our, maybe I'll write it down here. Step one, I'm going to write it like this, sine inverse of, and I'm going to use this number, 0 0.2500, That's what the sine function gives. So the inverse function will give us back an angle. It doesn't necessarily give us a good angle, but let's see what happens in this case. Sine inverse on this calculator, shift, or yeah, shift sine. You can see the little inverse up there. And I type in 0 0.25, oops, 0, 0. And I get this number, and this is in degrees, 14 point, let's say 14.48. Okay, now here is where we're going to need to go, oh, that's in degrees. We need to go to the cast rule to know if this is a good answer or if we need to do something else with it. And I happen to know this one's going to be good, so let's try it out. Here's our cast rule. I always draw a little sketch of the cast rule whenever I'm doing these questions. I'll put the little C, A, S, T in the corners of each quadrant. So everything's positive here, only sine is positive there, tangent, and only cosine down here. Because we know that the sine of our unknown angles is a positive number, positive 0 0.2500, we know that we're going to end up with answers in this quadrant here, where sine is positive, and also this quadrant here where everything's positive. So I'm looking for these two angles, a quadrant 1 and a quadrant 2 angles. Let's look at this possible answer here. Our calculator gave a quadrant one angle. And so 14.48 degrees is a solution. 
Now we need to find the other solution. There is another solution in quadrant 2. Now to find a related angle in quadrant 2, we're going to need to use the, uh, the this acute angle. Uh, maybe I'll just write, so there is another solution in quadrant 2, the related angle to 14.48 degrees. Now in order to find the related angle, we need to know the acute angle right here, which we call beta. And in this case, because we have a quadrant one angle, we already know what beta is. And there'll be 14.48 degrees on this side as well. That helps us back up from 180 back to the angle we're looking for. So here I can write the Q3, sorry, Q2, quadrant two, related angle is, I'll take 180 degrees, and I'll subtract beta, this little slice in here, to be left with the portion I want. And I can probably do that one in my head. 165.52, uh, I think that's right. And so those are the two solutions. Let's write this down with a final sentence. So theta is approximately 14.48 degrees or 165.52 degrees. So we use the word or because we can't say both of these are, are theta, but theta can be this number or it can be this number for in order to satisfy that equation. So hey, we finished one already. Let's try another one. We're going to word this one a little bit differently. Solve cosine theta equals negative 0 0.4540. And I'm going to use some fancy notation now, um, like this, where theta is in, and we're going to use interval notation. So I'm going to write 0 degrees, comma, 360 degrees, and I'll put a little round bracket here. This means it's anything from 0 up to 360, but don't include 360. Just fancy notation for the, exactly the same thing we said before, all the numbers between 0 and 360. So let's start with the cast rule. Uh, let's, actually, let's start with our uh, find that inverse, right? Once again, cosine inverse of this number. Notice I'm not saying theta equals because I have to see what my calculator gives me first. Cos inverse of negative 0 0.4540. Okay, about 117, almost exactly 117. Still approximation, 117, let's say 117.0 degrees. Now we go to the cast rule and see if that's something that we are expecting. Draw my little cast rule over here. C a s t cosine of theta is a negative number negative numbers for cosine happen well that's positive everything's positive there so i'm looking for angles that are over here or over here quadrants two and three so i guess this is step two we get q2 and q3 solutions. Now 117 degrees, that is a quadrant two solution. So that's cool. Maybe I'll just write that on there. That's fine. What is the related angle beta that goes there and then also goes there? So we have to do a quick calculation to find that out. Beta is, well, we're 180, and subtract off this 117, and we'll be left with the little slice that's there. 180 degrees minus 117.0 degrees, and that is 63.0 degrees, approximately. Okay, let's use that. Oops, get back to my blue pen. So we have our Q2 solution. Maybe I'll write 
that one down. So in Q2, we have 117.0 degrees. For Q3, quadrant 3, 180 degrees. And to that, we will add beta to go past 180 down to this other pink line here. Uh, beta is 63. And so that's what, 243.0 degrees, approximately. So those are our two solutions. Let's write that down. Oops, blue again. So theta, oops, I wrote the wrong thing. Try again. Theta is 117.0, approximately, or 243.0. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, and this time let's try solve cosecant theta is negative 2.3759 for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. And very often people will just leave this part out. Just solve this is what we typically do. Um, as I'm recording this, this is for my grade 11 class, and we're always solving on this range right here. So let's try it out. Uh, wait a second. Uh, the first problem is I don't have a cosecant inverse button on here. So I'm going to have to switch this into the primary trig ratio so I can use my calculator. So I guess step one here, unfortunately, like step 1a is let's convert to a primary trig function. And in this case, cosecant switches with sine. Cosecant and sine are uh, kind of correlated. Well, the way we do that is the sine of theta will be the reciprocal of the cosecant. It's 1 divided by the cosecant. So I can write that just like that, 1 divided by that number. Cosecant is negative 2.3759, so sine is 1 over that number. Be careful, we're not taking the reciprocal of the angles, we're taking the reciprocal of this number that the functions give us. Well, now we can use our strategy of taking the sine inverse of that number, to give us an angle to work with. Now this is going to look a little unusual, so stay with me. Sine inverse. In the brackets here, you might like to use your fraction button. 1 over negative 2.3759. Okay, and huh, negative 24.9. Very strange. You'll notice that's not between 0 and 360, and this is why we're not writing theta equals something, because this number is a great number, but it's not in the range we're looking for. So we, from here, have to interpret this, and we'll do that using our cast rule in step 2. C A S T. Let's see now. The sine of theta is, that's a negative number. Looking at our cast rule, sine is positive on the tops, so that means we're going to get angles down here. Negative 24.9, well, that would be starting at 0 and backing up, going clockwise. What this tells us is beta. It tells us beta is 24.9 degrees. And this terminal arm is appropriate. It will give this sign, but it's the angle for negative uh, 24.9. That's not exactly the angle we're looking for. We want angles between 0 and 360. So this terminal arm here, let's figure out, uh, and figure out for each of them, what those angles must be if they're between 0 and 360. So let's start with the quadrant 4 angle. That's this one here. In quadrant 4, 360 degrees minus beta. Now, as I said, we know beta because we were given this negative 24.9. We were given this little piece, which is the related acute angle. 
we're given negative 24.9, the positive version is beta. So 360 minus 24.9 is uh, 335.1. That sounds right. That's our quadrant four result. And we also need a quadrant three result over here. That's from our cast rule. Well, to get that, we're going to go 180 plus beta. This would be beta over here. I'll write that on there. One hundred eighty degrees plus beta. Oops, I guess I could have written twenty four point nine. And that's going to be two o four point nine degrees. So the solutions then. Our theta equals uh, 204.9 approximately, or 335.1. Okay, here's some homework. Try solving each of the equations below, where theta is between 0 and 360 degrees, and I want you to draw a cast rule sketch for each one of those so that you're making sure that you're getting the angles in the right quadrants. So I'm just going to move this up so you can see all of the six questions. Notice that I've used different trig ratios, sometimes using the primary ratios and sometimes using the secondary ratios. So this is a great time to pause the video, write down these questions and give it a try. If you're in my course right now, if you're taking one of my classes, you can send me your homework in a message. And if you're not in one of my classes and you're just watching this on YouTube, feel free to put stuff down in the comments if you have answers or questions, and I can check your work down there. Okay, thanks very much, and I'll talk to you soon.